So excited that you're here, Eric Gilmore. Oh, it's always a pleasure to be with you, man. Guys, this is my dear friend, Eric Gilmore. Uh, dear friend of mine. We've I've had the privilege of serving him for about, what, three years almost? Yeah. yeah. Just being your assistant and traveling with you and, and learning and serving you. It's been awesome. Yeah, we had a lot of fun times. Oh. The sweetness of the Lord was with us. It is a, it's a great friendship that God has made. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And it's cool how things are just, they, they seem to come back in full circle where... You know, now we have a church, and then now it's on this <laughs> side of the spectrum where we were the ones that would go to church to church, and right. now I'm one of the churches that gets to host you. So <laughs> <laughs> it's just awesome um, with what the Lord is doing. Eric, talk to us about what God is doing. Like, what what is it that the Holy Spirit has been showing you? Yeah, it's funny how in life you go through different seasons, mm -hmm. and this season, this period of time that I'm in everything seems to be about dependency mm. like i need you lord and i refuse to have any other options mm. i want only you right and so when we say dependency we're actually saying i trust you yeah and i think our, that dependency expresses itself in certain ways one of them being uh prayer you know spending time in communion with god is a expression of dependency and I'm getting to the point where God is opening me up to see how badly I actually need him to the point where I can actually say, Lord, I don't even, what I need is for you to show me how much I don't recognize mm. I, I need you. That's my biggest corruption is that I think that there's something in me that doesn't necessarily need the Lord. So I'm in a season right now where God is revealing to me and taking me deeper in dependency, man. And it's freeing and it's it's a, it's a place of joy. Yes. It's a place of trust. And uh, there's an old Puritan prayer that I like. It says, grant me to feel my need of your continual saviorhood. Mm. In other words, this is what I'm asking God, that you would help me see my need of you saving me again and again and again. So that's that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. What, what about you? Where are you at? It's funny. Every time I hear you talk about dependence, I always have to tell on myself because there was one one particular occasion that we were in in, in Canada. Uh, we had a lot of funny things that happened there, but needless to say, there was one particular day that you just felt in your heart for me just to open up the service and minister and share. And you said to me something, you were like, hey, I want you to just share and flow. And I said, I don't know what that means. And you're like, just depend on the Lord. Mm. And when you gave me that answer, my heart internally was offended because uh -huh. i'm like what do i need the lord for for opening a service and as soon as we had that conversation i think it was sovereignly the lord uh my back was pinched whoa real bad and that night i had to lay on the floor and i was literally weeping because in my mind i'm like how can i flow or deliver anything in this condition there was something in the back of my my heart that said that I was relying upon my own gifting, wow. my own ability to speak or to say something. And so it put me in a place where it forced me to depend on the spirit. And I remember being super nervous that night to open. I thought I was prepared to do something or to say something, but I was in so much pain. It was like I lost myself. I forgot I didn't even know what to say. Mm. And it ended up for me personally mm -hmm. being one of the most powerful experiences of allowing the presence of God to flow through you because you're not in the way. Yeah. <laughs> so it forced me dependency. And that night I learned something like the the day that you cease to depend on him, uh, you, you, you lose, you know? And yeah. so where where i'm at is i'm in the same vein like dependency for me is everything absolutely yes. and one of the one of the phrases that's just been in my heart is resigning just resign mm. resign <laughs> we always want our way yeah we true. always want to make something happen we always mm. want to do something you know ministry can be very busy yeah. as you know things happen and and when things wane you you try to make something happen to open this door and open that and it's like, it seems like every time I get into the presence of God, when I reach that point of total dependency upon him, it's almost like 
just resign, just resign, just lose sight of yourself and your own rights, you know? So that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, man. So tell me, you wrote a book and tell me a little bit about that. What, what expired, inspired you to do that? Like what, mm. what was, what was going on in your heart? So the book is called Delighting in His Presence, which is our life source. Yes. Our life supply, our greatest joy is to find satisfaction in his person. So the whole book is literally about relishing the, the person of the Lord in our daily lives. It, it, to me, is the essential issue. This is central mm. communion with God. So the whole book is 305 pages, 108 chapters, bite-sized, short chapters, that all have this one theme. A enjoying God. I feel, I even said last night at your church, uh, House of Glory. Yeah, <laughs> I I, I, uh, I said at your church last night that when we stop enjoying God, we we miss the whole point of everything. Absolutely, you can, we can have everything right if we miss enjoying God. God's not getting from us what He desires, which is us mm -hmm. and our hearts, heart exchange, heart love, heart connection. So that's what the book is all about. But you wrote a book called Fresh Oil, yeah. which is the name of also your traveling conferences. Yeah, right. So yeah. what, what's what's the theme of the book, and mm -hmm. why did you why did you write it? So for me, uh, my live stream is called Fresh Oil, and it's based on Psalm ninety two verse ten, where it says, "You've strengthened my horn like an ox, mm -hmm. and I'm anointed with fresh oil." Yeah. It's one of my favorite verses, even back to my youth. Um, it goes. It's personal for me because I experienced a moment of a strong season of heavy, heavy glory in my own personal life. And it was marked by the Psalm 9210 fresh oil. Yeah. So it's always kind of stuck to me, always stuck to me. So we started the live stream, you know, we call it fresh oil and that's what it is. Like we just want people to encounter fresh oil <laughs> in their walk with the Lord, fresh zest for Jesus, fresh vigor for the things of God's spirit, um, a new appreciation for the enjoyment of the presence of the Lord. Right. And so the book came out of that. And I didn't even look for that like uh, charisma, uh, reached out to me and and asked me if I would be willing to write a book, and I said yes, absolutely. And they were like, "Well, we're thinking about fresh oil." And I'm like, "Well, that's perfect." So the so the book, the premise of the book, it, it's kind of funny. It's a little tease because it's fresh oil secrets to intimacy with the Holy Spirit, but I open it up with there are no secrets, <laughs> just the secret place. Yeah. Right. So um, that's where that's where it comes from. So I'm really excited about that. It comes out. November 12th. But Eric, just talking about enjoyment the, of the presence of yes. the Lord, like, man, like enjoyment and thankfulness and pleasure is all found in him. Mm -hmm. Right. I remember I was in my shed out there. I say this story often in the congregation. There was one, one time I, I uh, was really going through a really hard time, just ministry wise, just, you know, dealing with certain situations and personal issues. And I remember running into the to my shed and just talking to the Lord and just being upset. Like, hmm. God, you know, I just, I just start <laughs> hammering it, you know? And the Holy Spirit spoke to my heart and he was like, you're approaching me wrongly. Wow. And he, and as, as crazy as it sounds, he's like, go drink yourself a cup of coffee. Thank me for the birds outside and come back inside. Oh, wow. And it totally uh, changed my perspective on prayer. Hmm. And oftentimes the religious heart and the religious mind we come to God with this dr drudgery, like this dread, or we feel like we have to be somber or a f moments of woe or negativity, but that's the opposite of the gospel. Yeah. And so the reality is for me, I find that the more that I ex uh, experience the presence of God is in relation to the enjoyment of his presence. Yes. Scripture says in what Psalm 100, it says, enter his, his gates with thanksgiving and, and with, with praise. You pray something and you're thankful for something because you enjoy that. Mm. You know, if you were to put steak on, on the table and you were to eat it, uh, you would praise it, right? <laughs> You'd be praising as well. That's delicious. That's, That's so delicious. good. That's awesome. And we've got to approach God in that way. Many times the Lord isn't approached that way. Mm. It's like either God, I need something or an emergency call like god this needs to happen that but very few saints learn the the art of enjoying his presence mm -hmm. and man there's just something that opens up that there's a whole nother realm 
of experiencing his glorious presence through the door of enjoyment wouldn't mm -hmm. you say absolutely you you made a comment yesterday when we were talking you're saying how the bridal perspective yeah is not only the highest but it seems to be very neglected these mm -hmm. days and i feel like that's when we talk about enjoyment we're talking about love yeah uh we're talking about bridal exchange we're talking about two lovers who run away we're talking about a a, a a burning desire for and to be with i mean bro think about if somebody you didn't know very much told you hey man i'm coming i'm landing tomorrow at the airport can you come pick me up at 2 45 a.m you'd be like <laughs> man like i'll do it because i have to because i want to be a good person and you say i'll make it happen but if zuli was saying, babe, my flight arrives at 2.45 a.m. I'll be there in a heartbeat. You'd be like, I'm, I'm going to be there. And you'd probably be up early, probably be there early. It's because you love her. And yeah. love cause, makes the things that are difficult seem very easy. And, and love turns discipline into delight. Mm. And, and so that delight is inseparable from love. And this love is what you were saying yesterday. It's the bridal perspective. Yes. The, the church recognizing that he is our bridegroom, the lover of our souls. I told you what I want written on my tombstone was, I found him whom my soul loves and I will not let him go. Yeah. That's prayer. Prayer is, I can't wait to be in the presence of the one who has loved me and who has my heart. Mm. Uh, there's, a, there's a quote from St. Francis of Assisi. Uh, he says, "You Jesus has stolen my heart and ran away to heaven with it. <laughs> that is the issue. So I think when you're talking about delight, I think it's inseparable from love and thanksgiving. Absolutely. When you look at your wife and you look at the one that you love, you look at your kids even. Yeah. And you just are, oh, God, I'm so thankful. Yes. You know, it's just there's a gratitude there because you realize you don't deserve anything from the Lord. Mm -hmm. what, what, what goodness do we have to be able to receive or deserve any? thing that God would lavish on us, but every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father above. So we just see this father-like nature that makes us say, Lord, I'm so grateful. Yeah. You know, I, I remember um, listening to Walter Butler. He's one of my favorite people to listen to. He's dead now, but he used to teach on the presence of God a lot. And he said, there's times uh, in when you become aware of God where the only mm. thing you can say is, praise the Lord. Yes. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about. Absolutely. Talking about. So let me ask you, in, in your life, have you seen that this delight in his presence has grown in your life? Or do you feel like it's always been the same? What do you feel like? It's all, for me, it's grown. Mm -hmm. For me, it's grown because like, you know, the scripture says we go from glory to glory <laughs> and from faith to faith, right? Mm -hmm. And I've always loved the Lord. But what made me love the Lord was his presence. You know, his presence is what would causes our hearts to burn for him for the things of his of his presence but for me i would say it has grown and more become more fuller more mature yeah. but it's in the more that i relish on delighting in him and secondly maintaining a heart of simplicity wow. before him uh so as we progress in our walk with the Lord, we have a tendency and a, and a temptation to try to add on to that. Um, Jesus plus my theological perspectives, <laughs> Jesus plus, you know, uh, this or the other, or these, these different uh, flavors of expressions. But for me, the love and the enjoyment increases the more I keep my heart simple before him and just learn to enjoy him literally learn to enjoy i remember when i first started serving the lord yeah. like my prayer life personally has shifted so much where it, it was you know lots of praying in tongues out yeah. loud which lots of against, yeah. yeah which totally not against i pray in tongues every day mm -hmm. and i think i think any believer should it really does help yeah, it helps you slip out of your own mind you know but like it was like a lot of forcing and striving and yelling and now it's like, I don't even say a word, hopefully, you know? Yeah. And um, just like what you were saying before, that that phrase, praise the Lord, yeah, praise, the praise the Lord. Lord. And, and I, I'm stuck there, personally. I'm mm -hmm. just stuck there, just yeah. enjoying Him and delighting in His person, delighting in His presence, simply being there to be there with Him, no other agenda, just to simply love Him. 
And I find that when you keep your heart this way and you remain simple and, and pliable in the master's hand, everything else is added to you. Yeah. Wisdom comes, revelation of the scripture comes, um, insight comes, the intuitions of the spirit come, and you're not even asking for anything. Right. You're just simply being there. And it's there's something about being in his presence, delighting in his presence, it causes a literal enrichment mm -hmm. in everything. And then the next thing you know, anything you touch, there's an element of enrichment. And it reminds me of what you were saying at the House of Glory last night, yeah. that Mary chose the better part. Yes. And, and Martha was doing all these other things, but Jesus was all that Mary needed, mm -hmm. you know? So I don't know. I'm just kind of just thinking about these things. But for me, enjoyment has increased. Simplicity yeah. keeps me there. And thankfulness definitely sustains me yeah. in that. You know, a lot of times, you know, there's issues, there's problems. But the posture of the heart is, wow, God, thank you. Sometimes I, I'll even say something like this. I'm like, Lord, I'll look outside and I'll be like, Lord, thank you that I'm alive. Yeah. Thank you for my home. Yeah. Thanks for my wife. Thanks for my children. And you just slip into a greater awareness of the manifested presence of the Lord. Yes. That's the kingdom. That's heaven. There's no, there's no strife, striving, excuse me. Only the the the, the eternal rest and the love and the bliss of his person yeah yeah so paul wrote uh as the serpent beguiled eve mm. he feared that they would be led astray from the simplicity simplicity and purity of jesus christ and i think you're connecting those two things very well and i think that's what paul's trying to warn that this is what the deceptor does the deceiver does he he tries to get you to lead you astray, get your attention. To be led astray means something got your attention, you mm -hmm. followed it. So he tries to get your attention to pull you away from being simple. He tries to attract you to complexity. Yes. And thinking that it's you're going to get so much more or something's going to come to you if you're more complex. So he tries to lead you or, or lure you, or trick you into complexity. And then it's funny that he connects simplicity and purity. Mm. It's almost as if once it's no longer simple, it's no longer pure. Pure. Purity is connected to simplicity. Complexity is connected to being defiled. I think in some way, that's what he's trying to say. And what does he say the simplicity is? What does he say the, 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 uh, the purity is? It is Jesus, yeah, a person of the Lord. Not, mm. not so much his things, though we love his things. Absolutely. It's his person, who he is, experienced, and delighted in, yeah. enjoyed. I, I almost think you could say Paul is saying, I am afraid that this is what's going to happen. You're going to stop delighting in mm -hmm. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. through superiority, so through uh, through simplicity and, and purity. So, as you're saying that, I just thought of something else. Yeah. So, so, simplicity, yeah. right, is tied to purity, mm -hmm. and then purity is tied to visibility, mm -hmm. because Jesus said, "Blessed are the pure, pure. in heart, for yeah. they will see, see. God." Man, good. So, simplicity and purity are the avenues in which. It keeps you to see the Lord. Yes. And it's so easy to look away from him mm. when we stop looking at him. Mm. <laughs> when and when we stop being simple and we lose our purity. One of the things that the Lord's been also highlighting to me this year is just radical consecration. <laughs> just being consecrated, you yeah. know, like not in a legalistic standpoint. Yeah, right. right. But like I see consecration as a matter and a motive of the heart. Mm. So competition destroys consecration wow um good. other attentions yeah. though they may be good uh are not god robs you of that consecration and there's something to that where it's like when you keep your mm -hmm. simplicity and your purity and you allow the spirit to work that consecration in you uh there's a greater depth of experiencing the god's glory mm. you know do, do you think there's a connection between consecration and sanctification and if so, what is it? Man, that's a really that's a really good question. I see them related. I see consecration and sanctification pretty much as the same thing, I would say. Because I would say like consecration is, here, I would say it this way. I would say consecration is more of a heart and purpose posture of your mind and your heart. 
And then sanctification is the process of holiness that God is progressively synergizing you into himself. Mm. You know, that's what I, that's what I would say. How about you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would very similarly say consecration is my dedication to the Lord. I'm giving myself right. to the Lord. And the result of that is sanctification. I think I could say it like that. Yeah, like, that's good. Like you say, Lord, I consecrate my life to you. And when you've done that, that results in a life that's separate right. sanctification right. unto the Lord. Because as you live consecrated, you are living a sanctified life. So maybe consecration is what we do, do and sanctification is Boy. the result or the, what that looks like in yeah. our, our lives. What do you think? I would say, I would also add to that and yeah. say that consecration is what we do and then sanctification is what he does. Ah, that's you know? Yeah. So it's like our devotion is our consecration unto the Lord. And then our sanctification is what he's already done and what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. You know? So, yeah, because what he's done is continually working. One of my friends used to say, yeah. the, cro- the, f- the work of the cross is finished, but it's not finished with you. Mm-hmm. In other That's words, good. Jesus's part is completely done, but what's been done is still working. It's almost like Jesus dropped the the stone in the river or mm-hmm. in the in the pond. Mm-hmm. And that has completely happened already, but the results of that are continuing on in our lives. No? A hundred percent. Yeah, something like that. I would say that. It, re- it reminds me of um, the Emancipation Proclamation. <laughs> you know, the, the, the slaves... How, how are you going to tie this in? <laughs> So basically, the slaves were <laughs> okay, the slaves were free uh-huh. in Washington. <laughs> you know, there was already a decree; it was already a done deal. Oh, got you. But it took several years for the slaves to realize what yeah. has already been accomplished. To hear of it, and maybe even to believe it. To believe it. Wow. Yeah, and speaking of belief, that's just been another thing I've been really thinking about. Yeah, and in what way? And like, right beliefs produces right being, mm-hmm. and wrong beliefs produces wrong being. Yeah. You know, and 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 wrongly believing things, wrongly believing lies, wrongly believing deceptions create patterns and 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 strongholds and even in your own mind mm. where it impedes you from seeing the reality of who Christ is. I've just been thinking about that yeah. too. Yeah, faith is definitely uh can I mean I, I just did a whole class on faith with my mentoring group and I pulled a quote from A.W. Tozer, and he he was saying that faith is like an eyeball. Yeah, it's you by it we see, but it never sees itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I thought is very wow, very clever. Yeah, faith is the eye with which you look upon the Lord, but it never sees itself. It's not self conscious at all. It's Christ conscious, and so even with faith being a sight, what does it say about a, uh, uh, Moses's faith? It says he endured seeing him who's unseen Mm. there's something about this sight that faith gives and paul's praying for it in ephesians that the eyes of their heart be open be enlightened to see yeah yeah there is a there's a perception a a perceiving of the lord that is actually a receiving uh, of the lord and we practice it by prayer and things like this but yeah faith is is absolutely connected i remember uh bunky used to say that uh faith is a link with god's power yeah like if, if you're going to see any operation of the Holy Spirit in your life, it's going to be linked together with, with faith. Faith being the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not, not seen. seen. Uh, praise God, a conviction of things not seen. I mean, I've been reading Mueller recently, and he would get on his knees and ask for what he called fresh supplies. And he would say, Lord, we need fresh supplies. <laughs> and he said he would get up not knowing where or how or when, but he knew God would come through. And without sweating, he knew. That's a conviction of things not seen. Yeah. Faith. As he threw himself upon the Lord. I just read this morning, actually, from Psalm 62. It says, uh, uh, pour out your hearts to him, for God is a refuge for us. You know, laying the heart down. Lord, I have all this stuff in my heart. Mm. You know, you just talked a minute ago about going through stuff in ministry. Mm-hmm. And you basically were saying it was that, that, it was that place in prayer where you found thanksgiving and things. It's like sometimes I think the heart has all this stuff in it, maybe bitterness or resentment or frustration or questions. And I think what David is showing us, take your heart mm. with all those things that are in it, all the questions you have, and then just empty them at his feet Yeah, because God is a refuge for us. It's almost as if that's how you pass into God as refuge is empty your heart out at his yeah. feet and say, Lord, I have all these things. Yeah, but they're less important than you. 
Mm. You know, you're more important than all these things. Yeah. But I think that's faith. Uh huh. That's faith coming. He who comes to God must believe that he, that is. he is and that he's a rewarder of those who diligently yeah. seek him. One of the things that um, I've been saying a lot on the stream is, and, I, and on the congregation too, and something I, I even tell my kids is that we live by faith and not by sight, but once regain, once gaining faith, you have sight. Yeah. And it's not the other way around. You know, like we have, we, we, we see it to believe it, but Jesus says, believe it to see it. And you'll see it. Yeah. And so God is not against sight. It's just, he's, he's yeah. just, <laughs> it's just that he's, a, he's against the pers like looking for the outward sight, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. So faith truly does see. Yeah. <laughs> but it doesn't yeah. see the way that we think. Yeah. You know? Jesus said, if, didn't I tell you? That if you believe, you would, you would see, see these the glory things. of yeah. God. Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, that's so good. Yeah. Yeah. Talk to us a little bit more, a little bit about what's uh, in your book. Yeah. A little bit more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, and and I'm gonna put a link on the on the stream. Oh yeah. Thanks. So once that that comes in, so check out his book, order it, and uh, it'll be a big blessing to you. It'll be awesome. I encourage you to read it. Now, I appreciate you saying that because I really want this content. Yeah in the hands of the people because it's it makes things very simple and it makes things very joyful and delight filled uh, so the whole thing uh, the book is like i said relishing his presence but i go through certain portions of song of solomon mm -hmm. to reveal this bridal and bride concept this understanding this mystery as paul would call it and also i go through several portions of mary of bethany and how she is just in one case she's listening to his word and another one she's in crisis and she realizes his presence is more important than answers. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's another one where she doesn't care what anybody thinks about her and she gives everything at his feet. So there's portions of Mary Bethany and there are portions of the bride. There's portions of personal experiences where I saw how his love transforms our human hearts. And even like John 14, to him who loves me, I would disclose myself unto him. There, there's portions of uh, uh, Hosea in there, this, this prophet who has a, an understanding of God's broken heart for his people. So there's so many different angles, but one central theme, this delighting and an enjoyment of a satisfaction that comes from God. And it is very important to me. So that's why I'm just so behind the book. I'm like, I want to get this to as many people as possible so that they can just break into the bliss and enjoyment yeah. of God. I mean, the whole point of our ministry, what God called us to, is to bring the church into a deeper awareness, consciousness, and experience of God's presence in their daily lives. That's why we're alive, and that's what this book promotes. So let me turn the question on you, because November 12th, yeah. your book is going to be able to be purchased. They can pre-order it now, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, uh, It's put out by Des uh, uh, Charisma, uh, Charisma. Charisma Media, yeah. right? Uh, so what, what in the book, let's say if you were to say one portion of the book or something in the book that is very precious to you, what would you say it is? Oh, man, there's really just the, the foundation of the whole book is just personal you know, prayer time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's the, that's pretty much like what, what is the book is all about. But one of the things that's most precious to me is simply just learning to be with God for him. Yeah, that's great. That's it. And, um, I believe in that book, I even share a story where, um, uh, I was seeking the Lord and I was getting really frustrated because I wasn't experiencing anything. I wasn't quote unquote, feeling him. I felt all of feelings of tremendous frustration and, and negativity. And I remember it was, I, I was laying in my bed and I told the Lord, I was 17. I, you know, I just gotten saved. I said, Lord, you know, I'm trying to seek you. And this is, this is what I get in return. Nothing. I said, I don't want to talk to you just like that. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Oh, Chris, you're seeking my hands when you should be seeking my face. Wow. And at that moment, I knew what he meant. You know, when God speaks to yes. you, you know exactly what it means. Mm -hmm. And what it was, was I was too distracted trying to get something from him instead of being with him. And that is the premise of that whole book. It's That is what caused my prayer life to become just something transactional yeah. to purely relational and just being with them and so that's what's most precious to me you know there was a there was another time um where 
in recently, I want to say about five years back, uh, I was hitting what you would call like a dry season, if you want to call it that, you know, um, I have a different perspective on that now. But what it was back then was a same thing, hitting a brick wall. And a lot of people experience hitting like a brick wall. And it's because they're so preoccupied of what God they're 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 too caught up in trying to get God to do something and instead of just simply being and so one day I just gave up one day I just gave up and I was like God you know I don't know what else to do but I'm just gonna be here I'm not gonna look for anything I'm not even gonna look for the awareness of your presence I'm just gonna be here and God's presence began to become experientially knowable mm -hmm. with great ease. And it almost felt like I was going through the wrong door my, my whole time. And so many people go through the door of trying to get God to do something instead of simply being with him. Yes. And once you're with him, his hands are easily felt. Yes. You know, his power is easily discerned. It's almost like you've got to go through that door of of being with him for the sake of being with him. And then all these other things will be added onto you. Yeah. It, he's the kingdom yeah. is to seek him. So I don't kind of talk in no, that's, all that's sorts wonderful. of directions. Um, but One of the chapters in my yeah. book, uh, I talk about an experience that's very similar mm. at the very beginning. And somebody wrote on the book on that chapter and said that I was attacking Pentecostals. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you the story that made them say that I was picked up by an older man of God to go on a road trip. Yeah. And I was sitting in the passenger seat, and he goes, let's pray. So I did. The only thing I knew, like you said earlier in your life, yeah. was just tongues. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, we love tongues. Same. We use it all the time. Mm -hmm. But that's the only thing that I knew was just rattling off mm -hmm. loudly in tongues and da -da 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 -da, just going back and forth. And and um, I got tired of doing it, you know, because, you know, you're trying to get something to happen. And that's there's nothing more wearying than trying to get something to happen. It's and there's nothing more freeing than just mm -hmm. letting God do mm -hmm. everything. Uh, God longs to live his his life or live our lives for us he wants to live through us andrew murray said a dead christ i must do everything for but a living christ does everything for me and, and so in this time i'm I'm, da -da -da -da, I'm just going back and forth and he waits for me to get tired and then after i'm tired he does this thing that i'll never forget he had a he had a cup of coffee in his hand and <laughs> he had the steering wheel and another and he literally went like this i'll do it he went just like this jesus i worship you I give you honor, Lord. There's no one like you. I worship you. He just waits. <laughs> I'm sitting there next to him, and I feel the glory Come on. of God. And I start crying. Yeah. And I learned a very valuable lesson that day because I was crying for two reasons. One, because how easily he touched God was extremely frustrating to see. It was just like God was with him. And the second reason why I was crying is because I could feel the tangibility wow. of God's presence. But I learned a, a valuable lesson, and it is this. One ounce of adoration is worth tons of efforts and strivings. I found that the quickest way to God, as Brother Lawrence says, is love. Yeah. Just, Lord, I turn my love, my heart to you, and I worship you. And then there's just a, the awareness of what already is, a consciousness of my already obtained union through the yeah. cross of Christ. Oh, yes. Yeah. The consciousness of my... Uh, already obtained union my oneness with yes, christ man god you know many times we don't experience him because we're too full of ourselves <laughs> so true yeah. self-conscious bro yeah. david says lead me to the rock that's higher, higher. than i it's the transcendence of self-consciousness mm. that's where god is found yeah before he wasn't higher than himself he was in self-consciousness that's why his heart is faint nothing makes the heart more faint than self yeah focus self confidence self consciousness these things weary us so david is saying lord i need help yeah lead me to a state of being that is above self conscious which is my rock my yeah. refuge my fortress my god in whom i trust yeah it, that reminds me of like the first time we ever see that is with adam <laughs> oh yeah the first time like he be, the moment he becomes aware, aware of, himself, of himself yeah you know he is no longer perceiving the presence of God correctly. Mm. You know, he's too aware, too full of himself. Yeah. And I think that's what happens when we choose to worship and when we enjoy him. Yeah. What we're doing is we're getting our attention off of ourself and now we're putting it upon him. 
And now when we're putting it upon him, now we become full of him. Yes. And we experience that which has already been given to us. Yeah. It's like, I don't know what, how you would think about this, but but the, but the experiencing God's presence is like walking into a room that you are already in and begging to be in that room. Oh, you're saying trying to find? Yeah, yeah. trying to strive yeah. your way through it. Right. And oftentimes I hear people, like, why don't I feel God's presence? Why don't I sense God's presence? And and you're, <laughs> it's just that you're not aware like you need to be because you're too conscious of yourself. Yeah, it's a gospel deficiency. Yeah. To not understand the gospel is to look for God's presence. Yeah. To understand the gospel is to literally believe he lives in me. I remember I told Bunky one time because I was certain I was praying more hours than him a day. <laughs> I was just a young, arrogant uh, man. And I, I turned to Bunky and I said, hey, Pastor Bunky, can I ask you how many hours a day do you pray? And he did not answer my question. He pinpointed my problem. And he says this, I do not pray to get close to God. I pray because I am close to God. <laughs> and it sounds arrogant off the top, but when you really understand what he's saying, he believes the gospel. Yeah. And I didn't. I was praying to obtain something I already possessed in the gospel. Right. He just believed he already had it That's because right. of what Jesus did. And he's free from performance and he can just enjoy. Yeah. He used to say Christianity is not something to be endured something to be enjoyed. Oh, man, come on. <laughs> yeah, remember uh, talking about looking at yourself? Keith Green has a great lyric. It's so hard to see when my eyes are on me. That's the, the biggest block of our perception of God and hearing God mm -hmm. and enjoying God and receiving from God is self-consciousness. Even think about, I don't feel God. It still has <laughs> I in it. <laughs> right it's still about us you're still it's still about us it and i just so find true. men when we get away from ourselves and we just slip into just letting go losing sight of ourselves do we gain sight of him yes yeah, so and true. we see how easy it is to simply be with him and yeah. at first at first i remember one time we were we were talking i don't remember what trip uh we were we we were in but one of the things i asked you is um what is the only striving that we should be doing. Mm. And you said to me, um, to strive into entering into that rest. And then I asked you, well, what is that striving? It, do you remember what you said? I think it was, uh, you strive not to strive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Do everything you can to make sure you're doing nothing. Yeah. Do everything that you can to make sure you're not doing anything. Yeah. And it's like, it's so counterintuitive to the flesh, yeah. to the carnal man, to that type of thinking. But the glory of God is only to be received and and and, and the posture yeah. is rest. Uh, Ma Martha thinks Mary's doing nothing. Yeah. It's a she, waste. She's like, Look, I, I'm doing all of this alone. But what she's doing is fixed. She's receiving She's steady. She's getting him. She has him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's it. And once you have him, you have everything. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that's Why, it. You, don't, you don't need anything else after that. Oh, praise God. Praise that's, God. That's awesome, man. So, so Eric, any, um, any final thoughts? Any, any final things that you want to just share uh, with? Yeah, I want to say something. Yeah. I want to say that Chris Garcia has been a true friend to me. Amen. I've lost a lot of friends. I have been betrayed and hurt by people I, that I loved dearly yeah. with all my heart, people I, I consider to be my actual, you know, people, you know, my, my yeah. brother, you know, and, uh, but you've been a good friend to me and you have kept your word. You've been a man of integrity and a man who has loved the presence of the Lord. You haven't strayed from loving the presence of the Lord. So those of you that are watching this channel, you've chosen wisely to hang out with Chris <laughs> Garcia. And I, and I, and I'll tell you as well, um, that, what we're doing now, the streams, um, House of Glory, all of that is in some way the Lord has used you mm. to tie all of that with mm. with us. Mm. So um, thank you for being the gift that you are. And, you know, it's awesome. So I honor you as well. And you're a good friend to me as well. <laughs> so you've been a faithful friend, too. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. This is good stuff because the Lord loves when his sons love each other yeah that's it you know yeah it's good good stuff good, <laughs> that's stuff good stuff where can we find you on your youtube channel yeah so i have a, a youtube channel under my name eric gilmore g-i-l-m-o-u-r and i've got you know 160,000 mm -hmm. subscribers on there with all oh, there's 
hours of worship music, hours of little movies, hours of teaching, hours of interviews with some of my favorite people, David Ravenhill, Zach Poon, and things like this. But I just started another channel that is called Presence Podcast, and it is only podcasts, okay. all interviews, all just you know half hour podcasts and stuff like that. So I'm really excited about that. But what I really am excited about is my Tuesday night mentoring group. I meet with my partners for an hour every Tuesday. Mm. We we wait on the Lord. We linger in His presence. I I teach for a little bit to question and answer and things. It's a lot of fun. But that's at patreon.com backslash Eric Gilmore. Yeah. You can join there. Yeah, and check it out. I encourage you. I had the privilege of, of teaching yeah, one of yeah. those courses. You, you blew it to pieces. Yeah, it man. was fun. Yeah. Uh, you have a good group, you know, those that uh that mentorship program is so important. So check it out. Also, your website is sonshipintl.org, yeah. is it? Yeah, that's for invites and stuff. We're itinerant mainly. Yeah. I, I am serving at Nations Church, not on paid staff or anything, but as a rotation teacher yeah. at Nations Church in Orlando, which I love. It's been amazing. Over there. Oh, oh, by the way, if you haven't watched Multiplied, the documentary on uh, Prime Video, you got to watch it. Yeah. It is Jesus taking over Africa. Come on, Come on man. I <laughs> yeah, love it. I love that's it. That's awesome. Yes. Yeah, so. Well, Eric, thank you so much for, for coming. <laughs> I love you, It's brother. always been, I love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> so until next time, guys. So check out his channel, and it's going to be a great blessing to you. Many blessings to you.